My father told me a story once. I'll never forget it, for a few reasons. I think it's the first story he ever told me as a child. It's also the story of how my grandfather died, but honestly, that isn't the reason. You hear stories on TV, or sometimes you overhear something in a public place. People talk about ghosts and aliens, and you think to yourself, that ain't real. They're making it up, or they've mistaken, or they're crazy, or something like that. You just can't believe it. Until something happens, something that brings it all together, connects the dots in a way you didn't think of before. Maybe it happens to you. Maybe you hear the same story again and again, happening to different people. It doesn't take long for the world to become a lot bigger than you thought it was. As I said, this is a story my father told me, but I never believed it, even though he swore up and down it was true. It wasn't until I started clicking around the internet I started to believe. I started to hear other stories just like the one my father had told me. It didn't take me long to believe in the wreck. It's not what my father called it, of course. He never used the internet in his life. He wouldn't know what the consensus has taken to naming it. When he chose to call it something other than it or that thing, he called it Skinwalker, after an old Cherokee tale his grandfather told him. But I'll tell you the story, the way he told me. We were out hunting one night, he'd tell me. Coyotes. We'd kill them for fifty bucks a skin. They'd lived on a dairy farm in Ohio. They'd kill calves sometimes. We'd do it every night because we needed the money. Sometimes, while we were out, we'd come on a deer and kill it. The landlord didn't mind, and it could feed our family for a few nights and save us some money. Anyway, we were done making our rounds and headed home, walking, because we didn't have a car or some four-wheeler back then. We'd cut through the woods. That's when we came up on it. Blood everywhere, splattered on the trees, in the grass, in the creek, everywhere. At first, we'd figured it was a pack of coyotes. We'd seen it sometimes. They can't scavenge and start hunting deer or cattle. The worst was when they bred with feral dogs. But this wasn't like that. See, when a pack of dogs or wolves or coyotes attack something, they do it right. They'll pick off the one that's weak or sick or old or just small. They'll hunt it and draw it into a corner, some place it can't get out of, and they'll run it right into the biggest one, the Alpha. And that deer will never see the Alpha. It might hear it, but it won't see it. It'll just notice that its throat is gone, and then drop dead. It's quick, it's clean, that wasn't what happened here. Something had run up on a den of deer. Coyotes won't attack a den. Wolves neither, because they get too much of a fight. There were three, I think. Three bodies. Just torn apart. You'd see a head here, a leg there, and a torso there. Predators don't do that. They don't leave behind scraps. What had done this hadn't done it for the food. It had done it for fun. But we didn't know that. We saw a bunch of carcasses and we think it's something we've got to take care of. I remember my dad telling me to go home. He thought it was a pack of feral dogs. But I wasn't leaving him. And I damn sure wasn't walking through two miles of woods alone. With nothing but a twenty-two and a pocket knife. He was only 13 at the time, so a point .22 rifle was about the only gun he could reliably use. Dad had the shotgun, and I wasn't going anywhere without it. It took me a while to convince him, but we finally began tracking whatever did that. It wasn't hard either. We just followed the blood. Either that thing bled a deer before it got away, or it dragged one for a mile. 
I don't know. I know that I had never seen my dad scared before that night. We started hearing noises. There had been a lot of woods in my life. I have been all over the world, and ain't never heard noises like I heard that night. I heard things screaming. I heard deer, a fox, rabbits, raccoons and birds just scared. Keep in mind, this may be twelve or one o'clock except the fox and some birds nothing was supposed to be even awake. But they weren't just awake, they were moving. I saw flocks of birds that night fly straight into trees, just trying to get out of there. We came up on the pack of coyotes, nearly shot a couple thinking it was what we were looking for. But then we saw they were running towards us. They ran right past us, didn't even notice. Then some deer did the same thing. Then some rabbits, squirrels, foxes, even a couple of wild hogs. These things were supposed to be eating each other and the only thing they cared about was getting out of there. We should have put it together. That maybe, whatever we're tracking, it wasn't something we're supposed to see, and it wasn't something we could kill. I don't know why we didn't just go home. I guess we were curious. I think that was my dad's nature, to go towards trouble, to fight. And knowing what my father did during the war, my nature was to stay close to him. We finally get into an open valley. It was normally a soy field, but it wasn't in season, so it was just flat dirt. We saw the tracks then. A lot of animals fleeing the forest had paved over the land. But where that deer boat was, nothing had taken a single step like they were leaving it just for us to find. The tracks were shallow. Whatever it was couldn't have weighed more than a hundred pounds, but that didn't mean much. A bobcat weighing around forty pounds wet nearly tore out my damn throat. Once. All that it means is that it's quick and hard to hit. So we followed the tracks, and it didn't take us long to find where it is. There's this schoolhouse that sits on top of a hill. Half it been ripped out by a tornado, but nobody lived there, not for a long time. We caught homeless people in there, sometimes, or druggies looking for a safe place to shoot up. We figured maybe that was it. Maybe it was just some sick kid riding a high. But we didn't think that for long. We get within fifty yards and we hear this noise screeching kind of loud. It was sort of made up of two different sounds. One was a high-pitched screech, another was a low-pitched growl. It was making both at the same time. We get within twenty yards, and we hear this sound. I can remember thinking that it sounded like paper being torn apart, or someone was swinging water in a bucket back and forth. Dad looks at me, kneels down and whispers. I gotta stay behind him. Because we're about to corner him. Any animal will fight when it's cornered. Especially when it's a predator. But we can tell by the tracks it's just one. He tells me it's probably a single feral dog, probably rabid. The plan is to sneak up on it while it's eating. Shoot it, and then keep shooting it until it don't move no more. And slit its throat. And if it gets to Dad, it's my job to shoot it or stab it to get it off him. So he walks up, and I'm right behind him, just a tad to his side, so I can see what it is. I wish to this day I didn't. It was leaning over a carcass, tearing off its flesh, and throwing what it doesn't nibble at aside. There's blood all over the brick glistening in the moonlight. It's pale white, human looking, but not quite human. It had arms and legs like a human, but it sat like a monkey, hunched over, and its hands weren't normal. 
It had long fingers with claws at the end. So we see that and my dad hesitates. He wasn't about to fire on a person so he clears his throat to try and get it to turn around. I swear to god all the noise just ceased. I ain't never heard true silence like that before, and not after. But for two seconds nothing, nothing made any noise. Which made it all louder when it turned around. It made the shrill cry and jumped on dad. He got off a shot, I think he missed. If he hit the thing, it didn't mind. It was on him, tearing parts of him off. I started shooting it with the twenty-two point blank, but it barely bled the thing. I got off five rounds and I started hitting it with the gun, but, but it wasn't budging. It didn't even register I was there. It started clawing at my dad, taking bits of his flesh. It started on his torso, ripping off the skin, his tit, and moves up. It tore off his throat, it tore off his nose, his eyes, it scalped him. Then it started digging in, ripped off the bottom half of his jaw, little bones and a tube in your neck, in his ribs. I don't exactly remember what happened, but somehow my dad's knife ends up in the thing's shoulder and my dad ends up on my back. I'm running. My god, I'm running faster than I've ever run before. Or thereafter. And it's following me. I end up back in the woods, opposite to the ones we'd been in. I'm heading towards my landlord's house, but it's half a mile away. I can hear this thing screeching and moaning. I hear these tree branches crack and get thrown around. It sounds like it's taking an axe to every single tree I pass. It's cracking so loud and often. But I just ain't looking back. Finally, I trip onto gravel. I look up and there's the landlord and a bunch of his buddies drinking around the campfire. I scream and I cry and they come over. I'm telling them to call an ambulance and he looks at me. And I'll never forget what he said. What's that on your back? He asked me. Just as he said it, he saw one of those god-awful flannel shirts my dad wore everywhere. It was what was left of my dad. Most of his head, his torso, but nothing after his waist. Suddenly we hear it, screeching. He grabs me. My dad gets thrown to the ground. I'm fighting him, crying because I still think we can save him somehow. My dad had been gone for a while, since I picked him up. He has to pick me up and throw me inside before I come with him. He and his buddies were all inside, and they're locking doors and getting guns. The landlord's asking me what happened. What happened? But I just don't know what to tell him. He pieced enough of it all together to understand that there was something dangerous there. All the lights in the house are on, and someone calls the cops. They'll be there, but in 15 minutes. We look outside and see it walk in front of the fire they'd made. Don't know what it is, one of them says. It looks like an ape. Suddenly something goes through the window. He shoots at it. But it ain't the thing. It's my landlord's dog. Just the body, though. Not its head or legs. We start pushing things in front of the doors and windows. We hear something in the garage. I remember one of his friends saying that the doors were open. We hear metal and glass getting ripped apart. We put a couch and TV in front of the door to the garage. It banged around some more, but then it got quiet. Not silent like before. We could hear it move around some. And the guys were talking, making sure the guns were ready. Someone hands me a pistol. No sooner did I cock the hammer back did we hear something shatter upstairs. Then we heard it screech again, except it was louder. And it didn't echo and fade out because it was inside. We all rushed to the door leading upstairs and we got to it just as the thing did. It opened it just a bit and four or five men just slammed into it. It just got its hand through. Someone with a shotgun took care of that. 
put the barrel right into its wrist and pulled the trigger. Cut its hand clean off. That only pissed it off though. It started pushing on the door, clawing. We were on the one side, pushing as best we could, but it was on the other, doing just the same. The wood just wasn't going to hold, so someone tells us to keep our heads down. Suddenly, the top of the door is just gone. My ears are ringing, and the splinters are everywhere. Two or three of them just unloaded on the top of the door. I don't really know where it went after that. The police got there. I was still clued to that door. What was left of it? The sun was up before they got me off it. They put me in the hospital for a while. A lot of people talked to me, but I didn't talk back, not for a long, long time. When I got back home, I got a job for the landlord, working on the farm. We didn't talk much, none about the thing. But I signed up for the army when I was 19, and he sent me down to drink some scotch as a send-off. I asked him right away what the police told him. The story they went with was a wild animal, probably a wolf, or maybe a bear that had migrated north. I asked him how he could say that when they had the hand. He looks at me stunned. He tells me that the hand never made it back to the station. The cop who had it in his car wrecked, drove into a tree, died on impact. The hand was never found, probably taken away by an animal. The cops, when they would acknowledge the hand existed at all, said it was simply the paw of a bear that looked like a human hand. I never talked to the landlord again. He went missing when I was in basic. Never found him. They said he owed some people some money and just ran away. But I don't think it's that simple. I never went back to those woods. I wouldn't even if the whole goddamn US Army was at my back. But that was a lie. When my mother died, I didn't think my father felt like he had anything left and that he might as well settle old scores. He went to those woods. He never came back. FBI was called. They did a show for everyone involved, but I knew they weren't really looking. I had to get one drunk and slip him a few fifties before he finally told me that they got a few calls about those woods every year, about someone up and vanishing. But that wasn't all he wanted to tell me. Before he got up and left with the rest of his team, he wrote the rake onto a napkin. I didn't know what he meant until I searched it on the internet. Honestly, I would have rather not known. <laughs>